Welcome to ACC Network Women's Basketball from Atlanta, where Georgia Tech has already knocked off a pair of top 15 teams at home this year. Today, they look to slay the last unbeaten in women's college basketball from a Camus Pavilion. It's the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets against the number eight North Carolina State Wolfpack. Hi, everyone. Andy Demetrik, Fallon Stokes. Great to have you with us today. It hasn't been without adversity, Fallon, but North Carolina State still the last unbeaten standing in men's or women's college basketball. And they've been tremendous. They've had some key injuries this season. The big loss was Grace Hunter early on in the season to an ACL injury, but other players have really stepped up. A major reason why they've maintained their winning ways has been the play of the graduate student, Kiera Leslie. Kiera Leslie has been outstanding for this team. Since they're ha they've had some major injuries, she's really stepped up her game, averaging about 19 points a game in conference play, and she's been big for this NC State team. Meanwhile, Georgia Tech has gotten some clutch play from its own Kira. That would be the sophomore, Kira Fletcher. Kira Fletcher, what a game she had a week ago against Syracuse. She was amazing, had 22 points, nine rebounds, and seven assists, really close to a triple-double, and she was a big reason that Georgia Tech was able to get a key win in ACC play. Your starting lineups first for the eighth-ranked Wolfpack sophomore Kai Crutchfield has taken over for Hunter in the starting lineup. She's joined by Kira Leslie and the sharpshooter Aisling Koenig in the backcourt. Senior Dee Dee Rogers, her first career double-double versus Clemson Thursday with 11 points and 15 rebounds. Meanwhile, Georgia Tech switched up its starting lineup for the first time versus Syracuse. No surprise, they go right back to it with the freshman Lodemai Loudon starting in the backcourt with Fletcher and freshman Elizabeth Battigan. Dixon and Kubai in the front court. Here is Westmore, his sixth season as NC State head coach. His team was pushed to the brink the last two games, an overtime win versus Virginia Tech, and then Thursday surviving a major rally from Clemson. Michelle Joseph's team trying to snap a five-game losing streak to North Carolina State a week ago Sunday. They snapped Syracuse nine-game win streak. Today they look to do the same to the Wolfpack's 19-game win streak. And this is going to be an entertaining game. Both teams are really going to be going after it. Georgia Tech's on a huge high after getting a huge win against Syracuse last week. And as we said, NC State's undefeated, and they just keep soaring even after having to deal with the type of injuries they've have had to dealt with thus far this season. And RPI of six, so Michelle Joseph and the Yellow Jackets know this is not an opportunity they want to let slip by on their home floor. Yeah, if you can beat two ranked opponents in a week, that's saying that speaks volumes, especially in conference play. Kubai, good from the baseline. Lorella Kubai, the sophomore from Italy. And that's something she's, she's very capable of doing. We haven't seen much of her scoring thus far in conference play, but she can put up some numbers, and we know she can play some great defense and rebound the basketball. Carolina State won despite 21 turnovers against Clemson on Thursday. And managing that Georgia Tech trapping press will be a 40-minute endeavor as Leslie strokes the three. And, boy, she can score it. She can do it from all over the court. She can shoot the three. She can take you off the dribble. She's just an all-around player, and... Ever since they've had injuries and Grace Hunter went down, she's really stepped up her game, and you can just see it within her, the numbers bracket. She's just putting up big numbers for this NC State team. Lob pass was stolen away by Cassell. Erica Cassell, the Marietta, Georgia native. This is key. You see Georgia Tech early. They're going to be playing this zone defense. Michelle Joseph talked about it before the game that her team just likes to play zone defense right now, and it worked well against Syracuse. They limited Syracuse, who averaged about 81 points a game, to now about 50. Zone, they Woo! might need to make some adjustments if Leslie's going to shoot like that over the zone. <laughs> yeah, she's coming out hot. I mean, she can stroke it. They have to find her, her, find her early within their defensive sets if they want to stop her. There's Liz Dixon facing, firing. Liz Dixon scoreless her last two games. Remember, Georgia Tech did not play this week. Liz Dixon had been bothered by a sprained ankle. Surely that rested her good. It did, and you just saw it with that jump shot. She's been struggling a bit dealing with an ankle injury, but that was a nice-looking jump shot on that last possession for Georgia Tech. So Balogun and Kubai flash over to Leslie, and she takes Cassell now. Kicks out, Koenig for three. Aisling Koenig did something the Wolfpack fans have rarely seen in her career. She didn't make a three-pointer for the first <laughs> time in 51 games in that win over Clemson Fallon as we get into your keys. And just talking about the keys for NC State, they are a great rebounding team, but Georgia Tech is as well. So they're going to have to box out and keep Georgia Tech off the boards. And I think the key, they need to attack the basket, find ways to score against Georgia Tech's zone. 
And for Georgia Tech, they have to attack the boards and just let their defense create offense for them. That's their identity. When they play great defense, their offense somehow comes up. So they find it somewhere. Foul on Loudon on that loose ball. It's loaded by Loudon's first. Yeah, that paint may as well be an octagon this afternoon. <laughs> North Carolina State fourth in the nation in rebounding margin. Georgia Tech, one of the best offensive rebounding teams in America. Koenig lines up another three. You knew she wouldn't be denied. <laughs> and that's been something in the Clemson game that I think Koenig, she didn't get a lot of opportunities or didn't hit a three-point shot because she had to really handle the basketball and take over the point guard responsibilities. But when they're able to locate and find her and she's able to get set for a three-point shot, it's as good as money. Fletcher from the foul line. And Koenig clears it for the Wolfpack. Aisling Koenig was 0 for 7 against Clemson on Thursday. She had the longest active streak in the nation of consecutive games with a 3. It stopped at 51. The threes not stopping from the Wolfpack. That's already 4, and that's the first from Crutchfield. Yeah, the Wolfpack, they can shoot the 3. They shoot it pretty well around 33, 34% a game. So Georgia Tech, they know that's on the scouting report. That's what NC State wants to do. They want to shoot threes and knock them down, and they're doing it early in this game. Balligan can't answer fire. Dixon fights for the offensive rebound. It's off her. NC State possession. But North Carolina State foul on Thursday versus Clemson. We're 3 of 22. They've begun 4 of 5 from long distance, and they've opened up the 8-point lead. Well, you can tell. They were definitely working on that 3-point shot at practice, or at least trying to find ways to get their shooters open to give them some good-looking shots. All five of their field goal attempts so far bid from outside the arc. As Francesca Pond subs in for the first time, you see her defending Crutchfield. Kona gets the blow by, the pull up, and air ball, and Fletcher saves the rebound for the Yellow Jackets. And that was great defense by Dixon. She was playing against Koenig, who's a smaller guard, and it was a nice defensive set right there by Dixon. Fletcher resets. Coming off 22 in that win versus number 12 Syracuse last Sunday. The handoff, Balligan, the fadeaway baseline. And Kubai grabs the back tap. Going back to work underneath. And that rebound ripped out of Dixon's hands by Rogers, who had 15 boards against the Tigers Thursday. And Dee Dee Rogers, she's that utility player. She can rebound the basketball. She's the second leading rebounder for this team, right behind Leslie. And that's all she wants to do is just find ways to find the basketball and rebound it. 12-4 Wolfpack. Georgia Tech defeated number 12 Syracuse a week ago today, but they were down 13 midway through the third. Early deficit to begin against number 8 North Carolina State. Pons pull up, gets the roll. And that's a big-time shot. That's exactly what Georgia Tech has to do. They have to attack the zone against NC State, find ways to score in the paint, and that was a good-looking shot for Pond early in this game. Pond, her first career double-double off the bench versus Syracuse. It was only the second time in her now junior year that she has not started for Michelle Joseph, but did she respond? She did, and sometimes you have to do that with your key players just to wake them up a bit. Michelle Joseph thought she wasn't playing hard enough, and look what she did, had her first double-double. Cone slithers in, beats the shot clock, doesn't draw a rim, though, and that's a shot clock violation. Turnover gives it back to Georgia Tech as we've hit timeout. But the three-point shot is rolling early for Crutchfield. Man, the Wolfpack up 12-6 over Georgia Tech. Opening minutes from McCamish. North Carolina State doubling up Georgia Tech. Halfway through this first quarter in Atlanta, North Carolina State 19-0 in the last five games have been played without their leading scorer and second leading rebounder, Grace Hunter, who tore ACL late versus Duke January 3rd. Kira Leslie has already banged out a couple of threes in this quarter, Fallon, and has she ever stepped up after Grace Hunter stepped down? Oh, she stepped up big time, and we just said how her average increased. Before the injury, she was aver averaging about 13 points a game, and now she's at about 19 and shooting 50%. She's even raised her shooting percentage. So she's been very efficient for this NC State team and has already knocked down two big three-pointers to start this game. And 31 against Boston College. Of course, Wolfpack fans have grown accustomed to high-scoring. Leslie's wearing right. red and white. Her older brother, CJ, played for the Wolfpack men's team. Yeah, and I'm sure he had something to do when she graduated from Maryland and helping with that transfer. I'm sure he assisted in some way. Westmore more than happy to welcome her. 
Andrew passes batted by Crutchfield. And it deflects off of Fletcher. And that's something that Georgia Tech cannot do. They cannot turn the basketball over against NC State. NC State's defense is very stingy, so they have to protect the basketball and do well on it and take care of every possession they have on the offensive end. And North Carolina State fifth in the nation in field goal percentage defense. Fletcher right back with the turnover of her own. Yeah, you know Kiara Fletcher. If she loses it, she's going to find a way to get it back. And then she just gets Balagon going. That's what the Jackets need this afternoon, their leading scorer. And Liz Balagon just hits a big three. The freshman now 11 for her last 21 from three. Leading freshman scorer in the ACC. Alisa Kunain is in off the NC State bench, takes the entry pass. She's the second leading freshman scorer in the league as she goes to work on Dixon. And Kunain, that was a nice looking drop step. She just take, took her time and just made a nice little move in the middle of the paint. Nice layup, nice finish. Kunain averaging a hair under 12 points a game. Dixon down low. He got a little battle down there. The freshman, Dixon's like, I'm going to let you get away with that. <laughs> she comes back with a nice layup of her own. That rest certainly did Elizabeth Dixon well. Leslie slashes in. Snapped around to an open Kai Crunchfield. Can't get her second three-pointer of the quarter. Balligan tears it away. Up court pass. Dixon running the floor. Dixon keeps the pivot foot down and lays it in. I mean, that was a tough move by the freshman. Almost looks like she could have gotten called for the travel, but she's able to um, maintain her ground, her footing, and gets the layup. Makes it a one-point game. Crunchfield with the runner. Ty Crunchfield, only a 4.7 point a game score, but announcing herself early. She is. She already has a three in this game, and that was a nice little one-handed runner in the paint by Crutchfield. She's on the board, and she's not trying to let this win streak in for this NC State team either. She's playing really hard to start this game. Pond, that is her spot. The and junior from Italy. And she can make it look so easy when she gets going. Nice little one-two dribble to the paint, to the free throw line for the jump shot. Nice finish by Pond. And she's being active on the defensive end. We talk about the pressure defense that Georgia Tech plays, similar to Clemson, which gave NC State fits in their last game against Clemson the other night. They struggled against Clemson's full court pressure, and that helped Clemson get back in the ball game. And NC State was able to pull it out at the last minute. On Francois Jouf, Richard sophomore subs in for Dixon for Georgia Tech. And Michelle Joseph said she basically challenged Francesca Pond and moving her to the bench versus Syracuse. She told her point blank, I didn't think you were playing hard enough. And, and sometimes they was hear it. it was received, and she is really stepping up the last couple of games. Kunain with the left hand. No good over Balligan. And that was a great rebound by Balligan. Great boxing out by Georgia Tech to get that defensive rebound. Here's Juf. Backs away. Lets it fly. Minute and a half to play in this opening quarter. Stop and pop. Crutchfield, two more. I mean, she's feeling it. She's rolling right now. That was a nice little pull up. No one picked her up. She saw the opening, went to her spot. It just knocks down the jump shot. This was after a scoreless game versus Clemson in which she missed all five of her field goal attempts. Kai Crutchfield, the sophomore from Raleigh, seven. And it stretches the Wolfpack lead to three. Balligan. Rebound tap three to Kubai. Backing down Kunain. Front rims the hook. And a travel, uh, rather a turnover. Foul on Kubai. Yeah, that was an easy call for the ref to make. Leslie was trying to get out of the chaos, dribbling out. And you see Kubai, she tried to get right there. It was a little late, but gets called for the blocking foul. And I think they bumped knees a little bit. Kubai still on the floor. It is her first. Georgia Tech second as a team. NC State does a good job to break Georgia Tech's full court pressure defense. North Carolina State was up by 11 with eight minutes to go in the fourth quarter versus Clemson Thursday and surrendered a 12-0 Clemson run before they outlasted the Tigers down the stretch. Kunane whistled for steps. And Wes Moore said that Clemson game, quote, was about as fun for me as a root canal. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It, can, it was painful, painful to watch, but you have to applaud. Clemson's really stepped up this season, and they played some good defense down the stretch and just caused NC State fits. And you could just see with the missing guards they have due to injury, it really hurt them in that Clemson game. Goodbye, long on the jumper. Rebound, Shannon Scott. She puts it back in. And that's something that Shannon Scott's very capable of doing, and Michelle Joseph has been looking for her to do. 
in her junior season just to cause havoc, come off the bench and be very active for this squad. And the havoc creates the turnover. Shot clock is off. Georgia Tech trails by one. And a high-scoring first quarter from McCamish. Fletcher through a double team. Rebounded by Jones. Koenig hustling. Hits Crunchfield. Can she get it off in time? And that takes us to the end of the first quarter. North Carolina State shooting 53% and four first quarter three-pointers. Kai Crutchfield provided the spark, and it's the Wolfpack by one. A fast-paced first quarter in McCamish Pavilion, which sees North Carolina State leading Georgia Tech by one. Wolfpack bidding for their best start in conference play in 30 years, 6-0. Taking on the 3-3 three and three Yellow Jackets. Fallon, two key areas to watch as this game unfolds. Yes, and we said the main thing was rebounding for both of these teams. Right now they're pretty even at eight rebounds apiece, but they both are very good rebounding teams. And in order, whoever out-rebounds the other team, it, they would probably be the likely winner in this game. And three-point shooting, well, NC State has started that off very well and shooting about 66% to start this game or 67% behind the arc. Georgia Tech is right at 50%. So both of these teams can shoot the three pretty well. And since they like to play zone matchup defenses, that's something that they need to do if they want to get a win this afternoon. North Carolina State, four of six from deep after going three of 22 versus Clemson. Georgia Tech's three-pointer came from Elizabeth Balligan as you take a look at Kiera Fletcher. 22 points, nine rebounds, a career-high seven assists in that upset over number 12 Syracuse. Michelle Joseph has been very candid. She says when Fletcher plays well, our team plays well. They definitely do. And if she's steady, this team is steady. She's their point guard. She's their leader. They look to her. And since she's just a sophomore, but she has so much leadership and some good experience from playing a season ago, they really look to her to really guide and lead this team. Personal foul was on Shannon Scott as she defended for former high school teammate D.D. Rogers. I know. Those two starred <laughs> together at Myers Park High in Charlotte, North Carolina. <laughs> Dee Dee Rogers, a great player. Her sister, Rodrigo Rogers, a former player here at Georgia Tech. She was a great player for Georgia Tech. So it just runs in the bloodline in the family. And, of course, their father, a legendary ACC player himself, and Rodney Rogers. Cassell rolls it up for two. At least they all stay within the ACC. The dad going to Clemson and these two, NC State and Georgia Tech. At the risk of offending the Demon Deacons, yeah. Rodney went to Wake Forest. I'm sorry, Wake Forest. Uh, my apologies. I'm sure Clemson would have liked to have him in the early 90s. <laughs> Dixon on Cassell and gets the soft bounce six points early for the freshman Elizabeth Dixon. And she's perfect from the field. Well, he said the last two games she struggled struggled a bit with that ankle injury, but she's coming right back. Jones whistled for the travel as Scott Loudon caused some pressure in the backcourt. And that's what Georgia Tech does. NC State right now, especially with the lack of a ball handler or a, a pure point guard right there, right now out there for them. They've struggled against pressure defense, full court pressure, and that's something Clemson did the other night and something Georgia Tech is picking up on this afternoon. As much as we've talked about the absence of Grace Hunter, let's not forget Kayla Ely, who started every game of point guard last year, suffered a knee injury in preseason. She's out for NC State as well. Yeah, she is, and she's a huge piece of the puzzle. They're starting point guard. You don't want to have your starting point guard out, especially – when you really needed to run your offense, but they've been rolling even without in her absence. They've been playing extremely well. People have been fitting in and doing the extra things in order to win. Pond from way downtown leads it short. Crutchfield in transition on Fletcher. Takes a spill. Offensive foul. Wow. North Carolina State bench didn't think Kira Fletcher at her feet set. We'll take another look. Is that personal? He is the first on Crutchfield. And Coach Moore, he was like, what was that? Crutchfield was really driving hard to the paint. Seems like Fletcher, they got there simultaneously, but Fletcher was able to get the call. The ref was right there, and she's able to draw the charge. Pond left alone. Well, you do that at your own risk. Dixon over the top, keeps the tap alive, but Crunchfield spins away with it. Has Leslie to her right. Leslie waits for reinforcements, almost lost the handle. Now Jones on the backside for three. And this time they grabbed Leslie for the over-the-back foul. That was a great box out by Pond right there. Leslie was trying to fight for it like NC State does on the, reba on the rebound and on the offensive end. But she gets called for the offensive foul. It's a first on Leslie, a third on NC State in the opening two minutes of the quarter foul. And we bring that up because North Carolina State can miss the second fewest fouls per game in the nation. And in that first quarter, didn't commit a single one. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's very impressive. 
Um, that just tells you they're, they're used to playing very good defense and aggressive defense without fouling. And that's something that's going to be critical in this game because you don't want to get Georgia Tech or NC State. You know, if it becomes a free throw shooting game, NC State will probably win that category as a team. They shoot the free throw very well. Team has been stuck at 2019 as Koenig takes. And the stare down with Dixon. She strolls right into the three. It's off the mark. And battling it up high for the Tech rebound. And Balligan. And these teams, they're going to be stingy. We said that. Both can play very good defense. Right now, both teams are settling for a lot of jump shots instead of going to the paint. Another jump shot by Cassell, and that's a rock. And that is not something Coach Moore wanted to see. Tech has missed his last five from the floor. And you see Georgia Tech trying to set something up. It's a little stagnant because NC State, they really play and they really hound in in the paint. Woo! Fletcher gets through. <laughs> Fletcher's able to get into the paint. It looked like NC State had it packed, but somehow she's able to finagle and wiggle her way to the basket for a nice layup and a nice finish. Nothing beats a good finagle in the half court. It doesn't. Georgia Tech retakes the lead. Pond with a strip. And his last off Francesca Pond, NC State possession. And that's good defense right there by Pond. That's something that Georgia Tech has. They have great size, especially with their guards who can really defend. And really, NC State, they can't match up to the height and size that Georgia Tech has. So it really is one of Georgia Tech's advantages in this ballgame. Kubai re-enters. Along with Loutonen. Who's out pestering Kayla Jones off the inbound. Cassell turns and lost it. Great defense right there by Channing Scott. And she breaks that energy off the bench. She can play post players. She can play guards. Very athletic. And that was just a nice possession right there by the junior. Good defense. Scott has found her niche off the bench. Is sort of the glue player for Michelle Joseph, the junior from Charlotte. As Loudon initiates the offense for the Yellow Jackets. Dubai turns and draws the foul. And that's a nice move by Kubai. You can see early in this game, she's been trying to establish herself down low on the low block, but she really just made a nice, aggressive move to the basket and was able to draw the foul. Which is charged to Cassell, who prepped at Holy Innocence Episcopal School. <laughs> Native of Marietta, as you see the foul on the hook shot. Holy Innocence. I used to play against them in high school. Did you? Yeah. How'd you do against them? I did well. My teams, we okay. didn't fare so well. Um, I played for Riverwood, and it was my first two years at Riverwood High School. We used to play against Holy Innocence. They always had great teams. Well, you speak enough Riverwood, you just sold all your teammates up the river. <laughs> oh, I played well. No, we just didn't have good showings. They had some good guards, and they had a really great post player at the time. She ended up going to Duke um, out of Holy Innocence. Goodbye, 0 for 2 at the free throw line. And the sophomore now 7 for her last 19 at the line. Keeps it a one-point tech lead. Leslie looking for the drop-down pass to Kunane. Batted away along the baseline. And they say Scott had her hands on it when that ball rolled across. Wolfpack ball. Well, it's been a lid on the rim. Neither team really being able to find or get the basketball in the basket in this second quarter after having that hot first quarter start. But these teams are really getting after it. They're fighting. Nothing's going to come easy. The cut off the inbound, and two free throws coming up for Rodgers. And that was a nice move right there by Rodgers. Aggressive cut. She didn't get the finish, but she's able to draw the foul. And she's just an athletic player. You have to watch her. Very athletic. Almost got a double clutch finish at the basket, but it was a nice aggressive cut, and she just split two defenders. That was the second on Shannon Scott. Dee Dee Rodgers. <laughs> Told you about her dad, Rodney, her sister, Rodrika. Finished her playing career at Georgia Tech in 2016. And high school teammates with Shannon Scott against whom she caused that foul. She splits the pair and ties this game up. <laughs> I'm sure they're very familiar with each other. Two very athletic players. And this that's one of those matchups where you say, Coach, oh, I don't need the scouting report. <laughs> Pond in the high post. A flip to Fletcher. Down to Kubai. Fletcher from mid mid range. And that's something we don't see too much out of Kiara Fletcher. She likes to penetrate. She likes to go amongst the bigs. But that was a nice looking jump shot by the guard. 
23-21, Georgia Tech. How would you say North Carolina State has handled the pressure in backcourt so far? They've been so-so, but Georgia Tech has done a, done a good job of forcing a lot of time off that shot clock because it's taking NC State time to get the ball across half court. Offensive foul underneath. And they tag Kubai for her second, trying to clear space on the block. She was. She was trying to establish her positioning and gets called for the offensive foul. You had Kunin right there and was already in position, and Kubai tried to push her out the way, and she gets called for an easy one right there. Yeah, that was the old leg whip. <laughs> so Kubai comes out, Dixon back in. Leslie, warded off by Pond, chases her off the three-point line. After Leslie strokes a couple of threes right out of the shoot, you know that she's drawing a lot more attention to the Georgia Tech defense. I know. As soon as that first timeout came, I'm sure Michelle Joseph was like, you need to find Leslie and find her early, and they've done a great job in the second quarter. Jones around two Yellow Jackets. Great ball rotation, but a three-second violation wipes out the shot attempt. Yeah, that was some great rotation, but just unfortunately they get called for that. Georgia Tech on top by due, 23-21, midway through the second quarter here in Atlanta. Georgia Tech, the two-point lead over North Carolina State, 4.45 to play. Second quarter to the left on your screen, Elizabeth Dixon, who's been a force her freshman season. She suffered a sprained ankle the day before Georgia Tech's game versus Clemson in consecutive games versus Clemson and Syracuse. No points, only two field goal attempts, but she has looked rejuvenated today. She has. I mean, she's perfect from the field. I mean, she's just been very aggressive in the right spots, right positioning, but she's playing like the Liz Dixon we saw against Duke when she had a monster game of like 22 points and 17 boards. So I'm sure Michelle Joseph is happy to see her going because right now she's been the most consistent offensive player in the Georgia Tech lineup to start this game thus far. One of two freshman McDonald's All-Americans on Michelle Joseph's roster, Elizabeth Balligan being the other. No rebounds yet for Dixon, but that's also something she does well. Fourth in the ACC in league games in offensive rebounds per contest. Yeah, she does a great job. You can probably just applaud NC State. They've done a great job of keeping her off the offensive boards early in this game. Fletcher. Nowhere to go. And a three-second violation that gives it right back to the Wolfpack. Last year, when NC State pulled away from Georgia Tech and Raleigh, Michelle Joseph said the Wolfpack sagged back, made it really difficult to get inside. They overpenetrated, and that cost Tech. They did, and that's what they do because Georgia Tech, they didn't have shooters that were very confident to shoot the basketball, and it's a struggle if you don't see that jump shot going down when you see a defensive player just sagging off of you and daring you to take a shot. NC State without a field goal going on five and a half minutes. Kunane changes that. <laughs> That was a nice move by Kunane. Just a freshman, a nice drop step move right to her left and a nice finish by the freshman. Number five rated center coming out of high school last year in Summerfield, North Carolina. Knocks this game at 23. Pond and a stare down with Jones. Lob was Aaron, recovered by Fletcher. Shot clock at eight. Dixon, hands off. Loudon into the lane, and an offensive foul. I believe they catch Loudon for the push off. And, and she, it's now Loudon in second. Yeah, Loudon, when she's penetrating, she tends to do that sometimes to extend that arm. And the referee was able to make that call that she was trying to drive as the shot clock was winding down. But she extended a bit against Crutchfield, and they were able to make that call. Sticky defense by Kai Crutchfield. She has performed really well today. Seven points, four rebounds. Working on Balligan. Pass was deflected. It's loose. And Balligan pulls it away. Wow, this is just a defensive game. These teams are stingy. Neither team able to score. Now the stuff underneath. <laughs> It's, they're stingy. You're not going to get anything at the basket easy. You better go in there hard and draw a foul. Rodgers rejects Fletcher. Leslie sheds Fletcher. Kicks to Crutchfield for another three. Crutchfield has been Clutchfield in this game, if you want to say it. She's been big to try and carry this NC State team, and it's just been very aggressive coming off of a poor shooting game against Clemson a couple of nights ago. A fifth three and nine attempts for NC State. They've regained the lead. 
Deja Jefferson left alone. Can't tie the game. Been a different story on the other side of the ledger. Georgia Tech, one of seven from three. Leslie bumped over Jefferson. No whistle. Now Kunane underneath. And a foul called on Balligan. Wow, I like to see the replay on that. It looked like Balagon may have been able to recover and good defense, but that was a good move, good catch by Coonan. Yeah, that's a foul. She hit her across the arm. Good call. It's Balligan's first. Fifth against Georgia Tech this quarter. It's Lisa Coonan, 72% free throw shooter. And Kunane, that's great when you have a center or a post player who can knock down free throws. As I said earlier, this NC State team, they're very capable. They shoot around 68% as a team from the free throw line, and they can knock down free throws when they need to. Best start in program history, longest win streak in school history for the Wolfpack trying to continue it here at McCamish Pavilion where Georgia Tech has gone 8-1. and one. NC State led by as many as eight in the opening minutes of the second quarter after Georgia Tech retook the lead, a 7-0 run. And the Wolfpack up by a five on the cut to the rim, Dixon. Nice connection between Pond and Dixon. Nice slip by Dixon, a nice pass by Pond. Dixon's able to finish and stay perfect. Truly a perfect 10 for Liz Dixon. Ten points, five of five shooting. Leslie, the rocker step, the step through, and the lay-in. She's been quiet, but that was a nice move right there by Leslie. She can score in a variety of ways. Something Westmore has lauded about Kira Leslie, her graduate student, the way that she's become a more complete player since coming out of high school. She has. I mean, and you have to attribute, she was in a great program at the University of Maryland and then comes over and, and comes to NC State as a grad student. It's just been tremendous for this team, has – a great offensive skill set and just a knack for scoring the basketball. Rogers racks up the block on Pond. Georgia Tech inbounds underneath Dixon. Whistle. It's a jump. Do we have a foul, a jump ball, or a travel? And they call the foul on Kunane. Could have gone one of three ways. We'll see it from the baseline. <laughs> And it could have been a jump, but then you, you had Kunane. She did foul her, hit her on the arm when she was going up. So just depends on what angle the ref <laughs> was. But I think Liz Dixon, she's happy about getting that call because she's at the free throw line. Rattles in the first. Dixon 67% at the foul line. And that's impressive for a freshman center to shoot that percentage from the free throw line. I mean, she's been able to knock some clutch free throws down, and she just knocks two down right there. Makes it a one-possession game, a minute 32 to play second quarter as Georgia Tech cranks up the pressure. Crutchfield doubled. Pass was batted. Scott runs it down. Koenig in pursuit. Blocks it. Oh, she thought she got it clean. Foul called instead. And she slapped the floor on that one. You saw her. She's like, I went back and I retrieved and got a block, which is, <laughs> which is something she probably doesn't often have an opportunity of doing, but that was just great hustle. That just tells you that seems like she did have a clean block. Maybe they called her for the foul at the end, but it looked pretty clean. As the free throw spins out on Scott, I think looking at that replay, the block was initially clean, clean but the hand her down. hand came down on the shoulder. It did. It on did. On the swing through. Scott splits the pair. But that just shows you the type of hustle defense NC State plays. They're not going to give up on a play just because they commit a turnover. It was great hustle. Hurry it into the forecourt. And you hear Westmore in front of us saying, let's go in deep to Kunane. And she draws the foul. <laughs> These teams are really getting after it. And seemingly it's so hard for them to score in the half court set. But if they're able to push the ball up full court, they're trying to push it and get to the basket and find ways to score. And that was a nice pass. To Kunane, nice move, and she's able to draw the foul for two. Up to seven first half points for Elisa Kunane. Second behind Georgia Tech's Elizabeth Balligan among ACC freshmen in scoring. Balligan, meanwhile, has been held in check. Just one of six and three points as Kunane stretches the Wolfpack lead to four. She comes out, and Cassell comes in. 
Yeah, Balagon hadn't had the type of start that we've seen her have thus far in ACC play, but you can just attribute that she's seeing a different defensive set from this NC State team, very aggressive and active on the defensive end in their matchup zone. Pond edges away, triggers the three. Rebound off the knee of Leslie. She showed off the vert. <laughs> she did. She skied for that one. Her head was pretty close to that rim, but she's not able to come down with that rebound, and it just goes out of bounds off her leg. But this is an opportunity for Georgia Tech. See if they can capitalize off of that missed opportunity. Fletcher got the seal. Goes up strong. Channels well by Cassell. Possession arrow keeps it with Georgia Tech. And that's great hustle by Fletcher. She goes up hard, tries to get an easy score, layup, misses, but gets her, fights for her own offensive rebound and is able to cause a jump ball. Fletcher does not rebound like a typical point no, guard. No, she doesn't. Like I said earlier, she's not afraid to go amongst the trees. She likes to go and fight with the bigs and get rebounds. You don't see that in point guards too often. Scott with a step back, no good. Dixon out leverages Koenig for the rebound. Foul called, and it'll be two free throws for Dixon. And that was great positioning by Dixon. She was right there. Koenig was right there trying to push her out. <laughs> She's undersized. She's trying to do all she can. But she actually gets called for that foul on the box out. Dixon, 13 points to lead all scores. Koenig comes out. Kayla Jones comes in. Yeah, Liz Dixon has been tremendous in this second quarter. If it hadn't been for her scoring, who knows what Georgia Tech would be in this game. Another two for two trip for the freshman. Five second differential, shot clock to game clock. You are walking that tripwire in know. the backcourt. Unless they thought about the three. Can't falter, she's made two today. Right. And she can score from pretty much anywhere. Shot clock at seven. Leslie. To Cassell, flashing, and she swishes it. Nice cut by Cassell. Nice pass by Leslie. That was a set play. Coach Moore was setting it up, orchestrating it from the sideline, and they were able to execute and finish. Pond, I don't believe that'll go. And it takes us to halftime and became his pavilion. Back and forth between the Yellow Jackets and Wolfpack. Number eight, North Carolina State trying to preserve the unbeaten record. They head to the locker room, up four on Georgia Tech. Half time for McCamish Pavilion, number eight North Carolina State over Georgia Tech 34-30. The elementary school dribblers are halftime entertainment. You know, when you face that Georgia Tech pressure, this is how many players it feels <laughs> like the Yellow Jackets have on the floor. But North Carolina State handled that well. A four-point lead, and it was a flurry of threes early. They got the tone set for the uh, Wolfpack. It, they were shooting them early. You know, Leslie came out. She knocked down two early, and then Crushville, she added some. Uh, Koenig, she had a big one as well. So that was big for NC State to start in that first quarter. They kind of dried off a little bit or cooled off in the second quarter, but Crutchfield's been huge. And then for Georgia Tech, if it wasn't for Elizabeth Dixon, who knows what type of scoring they would have had in that first half. She's been clutch, and she's been perfect from the field, 5-5 five five with 14 points. And it's just hit some big, big buckets inside for this Georgia Tech ball club. Georgia Tech's leading scorer, Elizabeth Balligan, one of six from the floor, just three points. But to your point, Liz Dixon, boy, one Elizabeth slumps, you go to another. <laughs> and That's Liz nice Dixon's 14 have. points, pacing the Yellow Jackets. Oh, we got a mass flossing <laughs> going on. Matt McCamish, 34 30, North Carolina State over Georgia Tech. Hard fought, fiercely contested. We'll take another timeout. Stay with us. More halftime coverage to come from Atlanta on ACC Network Extra. North Carolina State 34, Georgia Tech 30. Here at halftime in Atlanta, approaching the halfway mark of conference play. As we take a look at the ACC standings, North Carolina State, as we told you, 6-0, bidding for its best start in conference play since 1989. And, of course, no surprise, Notre Dame, the other unbeaten Louisville at 6-1. and one. Pay attention to the names and not necessarily the logos here. But, of course, Notre Dame 
looming on yeah. that North Carolina State schedule. Wolfpack have them in Raleigh on February the 18th. Score has already gone final today. Syracuse over Duke. That game was in Durham and a tight one unfolding between Boston College and Miami there in the fourth quarter in Coral Gables. And Notre Dame, how about North Carolina hanging tough with the top-ranked team in the land? I mean, that's the only way you can try and play them, especially if, if you're at home, is just try and compete. And that's great to see, you know, because Notre Dame, that's a tough team to try and beat. And Georgia Tech heads to <laughs> Chapel Hill on Thursday to take on the Tar Heels. Louisville up big on Pittsburgh. And Florida State trailing to Virginia Tech. When you're at Georgia Tech, oh, gosh. <laughs> sometimes you have to bring the halftime entertainment yourself. <laughs> we'll do our study in here courtside. Second half is coming up. The home Yellow Jackets trail by four to North Carolina State. Andrew Demetri, Fallon Stokes with you. Let's take a look at those first half stats. A really impressive North Carolina State, 55% from the floor. Why are they not leading by more 12 turnovers? Yeah, that's been the key. They've really struggled against Georgia Tech's pressure defense. Georgia Tech's done a great job of applying full court pressure against NC State and slowing them down a bit before they can get in their offensive sets. But they've still capitalized and they've shot, they shot very well in that first half. Kai Crunchfield, scoreless Thursday versus Clemson. She leads the Wolfpack with 10. Liz Dixon, 14 points, had a perfect 5 of 5 for the Yellow Jackets. North Carolina State, by the way, 5 of 9 from 3. Georgia Tech came in second in the ACC in three-point percentage defense. Long way to go and a lot to be decided this Sunday afternoon. It became his pavilion. Both teams huddling up one last time as we get set for the start of the second half. Well, Fallon, if you're Georgia Tech inside that huddle, you see North Carolina State shooting 55%. The 12 turnovers are good, but when North Carolina State is able to run its offense, they're having success. If you're Michelle Joseph, what adjustments do you make to, to cut into that? Well, you just have to continue. Even though they're shooting a high percentage, they still only scored 34 points in that first half. So at least you're limiting the amount of shots and opportunities they're, they're getting within their offensive sets. You just have to continue to be aggressive, find Leslie early, and then try and slow down Crutchfield. If you can get a hand out on those shooters, they're just being very aggressive. They're guards in that first half. And then you had Kunan come in, and she did. She showed some great post presence for NC State in that first half. So they just need to slow them down, slow them down a little bit. Yeah, Lisa Kunan, eight points, and a perfect four of four at the free throw line. Elizabeth Battigan, three first half points, one of six on the floor. Francesca Pond, Georgia Tech, second leading scorer, four points. But Balligan and Pond a combined three of 12 from the floor. One of those two you feel has to step up if Georgia Tech wants to pull ahead. And that's what you need to see. It was, it was similar a week ago against Syracuse. You had Fletcher who really carried Georgia Tech in the first half, and then you had other players like Balligan who was in foul trouble really step up. So I know Michelle Joseph is just hoping that one of her players can step up and start scoring. Crutchfield was feeling it off the mark there. Fletcher explodes to the rim and a foul call. They tag Rogers for it, but North Carolina State eased off. And they did. They slowed Fletcher back. Took advantage. They were a little sluggish getting back on defense, and that was just a great job by Fletcher. She read it and had, saw she had an opening to the basket and just drove it and was able to draw the foul. Foul was actually called on Cassell, her second. And the sophomore Kiro Fletcher from Warren, Michigan. And a rare miss by Fletcher, who went 10 of 11 at the line versus Syracuse last Sunday. Came in today shooting 84% at the stripe in ACC play. For context, she shot 62% in non-conference. <laughs> I tell you, it's just like a switch sometimes comes or cuts off of Kiara Fletcher. When conference play starts, she just takes her game to another level. She did it a season ago, and she's continuing it to do it this season as well in her sophomore campaign. She has a knack of getting to the free throw line at a high volume. Loudon and Pester's Crutchfield in the backcourt passes across the timeline. Now Leslie, pull up three. And that's as open as <laughs> she's going to get it. Wide open, and she's not able to knock down that three, but a good recovery, good pressure, full court defense by Georgia Tech. Battle again. Does this get her started? And we're tied up. I tell you, you can't keep that freshman down for too long. She just sees the sky is the limit, and she can score it. She doesn't get too low on herself if she's not knocking it down. Just comes out in the second half and hits a big three. 39% from three. The steal at midcourt. Balligan up with the right hand to give Georgia Tech the lead. 
She's and just a fun player to watch. Westmore wants timeout. A minute, eight seconds in, and Elizabeth Balligan, after three first half points, five in a row. And Georgia Tech takes the lead on the strength of the freshman. Georgia Tech in front by two. The freshman Elizabeth Balligan with a five-point burst to put the Yellow Jackets ahead. Balligan was held in check in the first half, but she has emerged as an elite scorer, not just in the ACC, but nationally among freshmen. 15.3 points per game coming in, Fallon. That's sixth most among freshmen in America. And she's been tremendous. She's really stepped it up in conference play, averaging nearly 20 points a game since the conference play has begun. But she's just a, a great all-around freshman, a McDonald's All-American. She's really showing what she's made of. She's been given a big opportunity on a big stage, and she's just running away with it. Four times ACC Rookie of the Week, ranked as high as the number nine player nationally. She prepped at Hamilton Heights Christian in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Plays the Westmore, knows well. Long time <laughs> and legendary head coach, University of Chattanooga. Calling that timeout, trying to settle down his troops after surrendering the lead. Yeah, and this is something that's critical. I'm sure he's trying to find a press breaker, which he does. Koenig, the jam step around Loudon. Can't finish over Kubai, and Loudon pulls it away. And Koenig really, really went hard to the basket, something we don't really see her doing too often. That's to out of her comfort zone. She's more of a catch-and-shoot scorer. Well, Koenig was coming off a season-low four points against Clemson, just three today on one of six shooting. Loudon runs her into a screen, and that's a travel. Yeah, that was an easy call to make. Lightning, and she was trying to penetrate hard to the middle of the floor in the paint and gets called for the travel when she switches her, her pivot foot. Loudon scoreless today, and she struggled offensively against Syracuse last Sunday, but she was so valuable on she the is. defensive end. Tiana Monacaki of Syracuse, in large part because of Loudon's defensive presence, was held to a season low in points. Fletcher jumped the passing lane, recovered by Crutchfield. I mean, her energy alone on the defensive end, it brings the defensive intensity for Georgia Tech to a whole nother level. So that's why it's important to have her out there. You don't need her to score, but she plays great defense. Cassell got the seal and draws the foul as the shot clock wound down. And that was a close call right there. You see Balagon looking like she thought she had a clean block on Cassell when she went up for that layup. But she gets called for the foul. Balagon second, man. Something Westmore talked about with us before the game. He said his team needs to do a better job of moving and not getting stagnant when they're now running a set play. After that ball was tipped, didn't have a set play, but showed good poise late in the shot clock. And Cassell rewarded with a pair of free throws, and she ties this game at 36. And that's, that's so critical. I mean, sometimes you're not going to be able to score or find a way to score within your offensive set. But just because you take a shot, you miss, you have to still fight and go after it. And I think that's something that has propelled or this NC State team has done so well, and that's why they're 19-0. Yeah, when you're 19-0, you don't get panicked very quickly. <laughs> Balligan lines up another three. <laughs> Better get a hand up. Oh. Balligan saw it right against Leslie and shoots it dead in her eye and knocks that three down. Balligan has eight in the quarter, not even three minutes in. This right here, Georgia Tech zone defense or their man-to-man -man coverage is really giving NC State fits. They're really covering a lot of ground. Leslie creates on Loudon with a pull-up three. It spins out. Rebound Dixon. And what a rebound by Dixon. So agile, able to grab that with one hand and corral it and then just pass it out to Balagon. They've been big, the two freshmen for Georgia Tech in this quarter. Loudon's three was blocked by Leslie. How about Loudon, meanwhile? Man-to-man -man defending on Leslie, North Carolina State's leading scorer and somebody who's averaged almost 20 points a game since Grace Hunter went down with injury. That is some trust in the freshman. Got to get back if you Georgia Tech. You got a wide open Cassell. Yeah, wide open off the dish from Cody. It was a nice look, nice finish by Cassell right there. She just shot out and asked for it and was able to get an easy layup. Eight points for Erica Cassell in her homecoming. Makes it a one-point lead again. Lob over the top. Oh, that ball was tipped and nearly went in. Pulled down by Rodgers. Yeah, that would have been an easy basket for Kubai if they could have gotten that tip. 
Rodgers had 15 boards against Clemson on Thursday and a hand check on the Yellow Jackets. That's going on Kubai, and for Lorella Kubai, her third. And that's not good. Kubai has been really active, especially on the defensive end, and it's been really impressive in this full-court pressure D that Georgia Tech's been applying against NC State. It's going to be a tough loss for her to go down with that third foul. Francesca Pond grabs her. Janet Scott also reports in. And it seems like Georgia Tech is doing a little bit or taking a page out of NC State's book and just sagging a bit and really asking NC State to shoot some outside shots. They're not shooting them like they were in that first half. They got the mismatch in the post. Cassell couldn't finish. Offensive rebounded by NC State. Fourth in the nation in rebounding margin. Right back to the well. Cassell turns into a double team and travels. And Cassell's upset. She thought she got fouled on that spin move, but... The ref called her for a travel as she was making her move to the basket. And Georgia Tech has really played some very good defense in this third quarter, in the second half. 14th NC State turnover. After committing 21 in that win versus Clemson Thursday. Another lob over the top. Dixon pinned down Cassell on the foul called on Cassell. And you can see Cassell's probably still a little upset about the previous play. She got called on the travel. Now she gets called for the foul. Kunain subs in for her. Fouls the second of the quarter against NC State. Kunain, though, gave great minutes oh, for great. Westmore off the bench. And Kunain, it's a better matchup against Dixon. She has the size to play her. Balligan short on the three. Maybe a little quick on the click even for Elizabeth Balligan. Yeah. Koenig on the dribble drive. Can't get NC State in front. Kunain, the stick fall doesn't fall. And here come the Yellow Jackets. Georgia Tech by one. Balligan draws the crowd. Kicks to Pond. Dixon underneath draws the foul. It was tap right down to her. North Carolina State thought Georgia Tech should have been whistled for the loose ball foul. Georgia Tech instead shoots free throws when we come back. After trailing by four at the break, Georgia Tech in front. Liz Dixon, one of the best offensive rebounders in the ACC. A board gives her a pair of free throws after this. Georgia Tech leads by one midway through the third quarter. The city of Atlanta, of course, Fallon transforming for Super Bowl 53 next Sunday. See State Farm Arena, which will be the side of NFL Media Day tomorrow. And North Carolina State and Georgia Tech well represented on the roster of the AFC champions. Check out the starting offensive line for the New England Patriots at left guard Joe Thune, who's starring for the Wolfpack. At right guard Shaq Mason, the former Yellow Jacket. Oh, that's a great combination of... You know, New England Patriots, they're probably picked to be the favorites in this Super Bowl because they tend to win it win it all the time. You don't want to take your bets against Tom Brady too often, but it's going to be a lot of fans, a lot of people in the city, great for the city of Atlanta, and it's great for those two individuals to represent their team and their respective schools. We love good guard play on this sure. broadcast. You got two great guards You didn't guards think it was right just there. basketball, right? No, no. It's not, it's not a reason. You know it's a good reason why Tom <laughs> Brady's able to get that much time to throw a football and make a pass. Liz Dixon shoots two free throws out of the timeout. I realize the Patriots might not be the popular choice right. of teams to pull for right. among the locals, but for NC State and Georgia Tech fans, that it's might great. be different. Great to see. Dixon gives the Jackets the two-point lead. 15 for the freshman. Right now, Georgia Tech's just extremely aggressive on the defensive end. You just saw Fletcher and Scott really get back fast on that press. Leslie arches the three. Woo! She can shoot it. And when she gets going, you don't want to leave her open. She just has a nice stroke, and it just looks so authentic, so easy. And she gets the lead back for her team. Knocked down a pair of three-pointers in the opening few minutes. That was their first three since, but it gives the Wolfpack the lead again. Balligan tries to cross by Leslie. Tough shot. Fletcher, loose ball foul. And it was a great box out right there by Crutchfield. She saw Fletcher and knew Fletcher was on her back. 
but she did exactly with one of the keys for NC State. They have to box these Georgia Tech guards or these players out because they like to crash the offensive boards, and that was a great, great job right there by Crutchfield. Rebounding margin is dead even. 22 for each team. North Carolina State plus 13 per game on the year as Koenig rains down the three. And just like that, North Carolina State leads by four. And Koenig, that's what she was looking for. She got that wide open three-point shot while NC State was break, breaking Georgia Tech's pressure, and she's able to knock a big three down. Screen and roll on the slip. Here's Dixon. Oh, too heavy. She missed it at the doorstep. Probably the easiest shot she's had all afternoon and probably should have just gone up with the left hand, shoots it with the right, and hits it a little too hard off the glass. Wolfpack will try to turn this into a four, perhaps a five-point swing. Koenig operates on Balligan. Down low, Kunane, and she got pushed. Well, that entry pass from Koenig was threatened to sail past Kunane. But the foul keeps possession with North Carolina State. And that was a good foul. I think Fletcher kind of held her a little bit. She knew it was looking like it was going to be an easy layup right there and trips her and gets called for the foul. The second on Fletcher, fourth of the quarter against Georgia Tech. Wes Moore. 5-0 all-time as head coach of NC State versus Georgia Tech. His team has won all four of its true road games. Leslie Canton shoot, high arching and good. She can knock him down. And she just finds her place, positioning. Nice corner, corner setup play right there for Leslie. And she knocks down that corner three off the inbounds pass. Three threes in a row by the Wolfpack, a 9-0 run. And an offensive foul on Dixon as she clobbered Kunane. And the Kunane's head snap back. They might have to take a look at this. As Michelle Joseph calls timeout, but off the inbound, the curl, the catch, and the rainmaker from Kiera Leslie. 47-40, North Carolina State leads timeout, Yellow Jackets. And Kiera Leslie, that's a player you cannot lose. You know that set play is coming for her out of bounds, and it was exactly set up, and they ran it exactly how it was set up by Coach Moore. Leslie up to 14 points and four of five from three. You see her peeking back over her shoulder just a moment ago. Maybe Big Brother was like, that was a nice shot right there. But she's playing extremely well. Nice showing for her fans or support she has today. Family who's here. <laughs> Big is, Brother talking to her. <laughs> yeah, that is CJ Leslie. Played at North Carolina State 2010 to 2013. Most recently in the G League. He was a guy who could get some buckets in his days in Raleigh, and surely he would approve of that long-range stroke from Little Sis. Yeah, I'm sure he taught her a few pointers, and she is really just carrying the torch for that family today, this afternoon, hitting some big clutch three-point shots for her team on the road. They deemed nothing flagrant worthy by that offensive foul by Dixon, but North Carolina State has a chance, family, to extend this 9-0 run. They do, and this has been the key. They've done a little bit better job in this third quarter to handle Georgia Tech's pressure. Balligan pokes it out of bounds. Georgia Tech rallied from 13 down midway through the third last Sunday versus Syracuse to upend the number 12 orange. And facing the deficit here to number eight North Carolina State. Touch pass, Koenig spots up for a three. And Kubai glides in for the Tech rebound. And when Koenig, when she lets it fly, the whole bench jumps up because they think it's going down. She shoots that three so well, and she's just been struggling a bit since her point guard responsibilities have heightened a bit. But she can score it, and she can shoot it. Broke a school record for made three-pointers last year as a sophomore. Kubai grabs the offensive rebound. Grinding away on Kunane off the bottom of the backboard, trying for the stick back, and is pulled away by Rogers, but she travels. Wow. That was a close call. Ro Rodgers was in there amongst the trees, and she comes down with that rebound. That was really impressive. Double, double. Just shows you the type of rebounding capabilities D.D. Rodgers has. And as she was trying to make the outlet pass, she gets called for the travel, lifted that pivot foot. Kubai off the inbound. As Georgia Tech looks to snap an 0 of 8 stretch from the floor. Kubai, tough shot, but she banks it in. I don't know how she got that one in. High off the glass, she just let it fly. But she likes to shoot that one-handed hook shot, and she was able to get that one to fall. Might not have even had a clear look at the rim. <laughs> Trying to body up Kunane. Down to a five-point North Carolina State lead inside of two-third quarter. Kunane on Kubai. 
And a foul on Lorella Kubai. That's her fourth. I mean, Kunain's footwork is just pretty amazing for a freshman. It was a nice baseline turn. And she's going against Kubai, who's a sophomore, but a great defensive player for Georgia Tech. And she just goes hard and was able to draw that foul. Alisa Kunain, eight points and four of four at the free throw line. Make her five for five. Man, that's impressive. I mean, especially a post player with her size. She has a nice touch at the free throw line and around the rim. That's very impressive for a freshman. Goodbye. Sits with the four personals. Loaded by Loudon and subs back in. And Kunane's second is good as well. Wes Moore has said that Elisa Kunane plays harder than any 6'5 kid I've ever seen. She does, and she's very, very mobile. That's what you're starting to see, the new trend of these 6'5 post players. They have the size, but they can move too. Speaking of moving, she can move the nets. She Francesca Pond, the three. And that was a needed three. She's been pretty quiet in the second half, but hopefully that can get her going. NC State breaks the pressure, leads to an open three. Koenig off the back heel, rebound Dixon. And Koenig is probably shooting herself because those are shots she she's able to knock down and had two open threes that she hadn't been able to hit the last couple of possessions for NC State. Uh, approaching one minute in the third. Entry pass. Dixon was blocked over the top by Kunane and is out of bounds to NC State. One defense by the freshman Elisa Kunane. Wow, and these freshmen are just battling. Kunane right there, great defense, great recovery, and was able to get a hand as Dixon thought she had a wide open look at the basket, and Kunane recovers and able, is able to get the block. And the layup doesn't fall on the other end by Leslie Kunane, fighting for it, whistle, and she was tied up by Pond, foul on Francesca Pond. And she's hustling, she's fighting for the rebounds, doing exactly what Coach Moore likes his NC State team to do. They're hustling, trying to get second chance opportunities. Leslie misses that layup, but Kunane was right there to get that rebound, and, and now she's at the free throw line for two more. Pond's first, North Carolina State in the bonus. And Kunane's first miss in seven attempts at the line. As you see this game unfold, you can understand why Fallon North Carolina State's 19-0, in spite of not having their projected starting point guard, in spite of losing redshirt junior Grace Hunter, their leading scorer and second leading rebounder. A lot of poised players, a lot of unselfishness, a lot of different players who aren't afraid to step up. They aren't, and the key is I think each player has bought into Coach Moore's system, and they've bought into their roles. They see it's an opportunity for them to step up with injuries on this team, and they just play their roles. They don't do too much, don't do too little. They just play well as a team. Pot out high. Pulls up. Ooh. Oh, it swirled around and off. <laughs> I don't think she called bank on that one if it had gone in, but that was a nice shot by Pond. Just couldn't get it to fall. Shot clock is dark. Coney tries to fend off Balligan. Oh, and they call a foul on Balligan. Got a little too close to Alyssa Co Aisling Koenig. She did, and Balagon, she likes to play that pressure defense. Very aggressive, but she gets called for the hand check right there, and now you got Koenig going to the line for two. This is a rare side, Aisling Koenig. We know she can shoot it, but because she's a shooter, not as much a, a foul shooter, she's only three and six at the foul line this year. <laughs> she doesn't go too often. <laughs> she's usually shooting them behind the arc, but you, yeah. you, sometimes you do see that. Great three-point shooters who just can't knock it down as well behind the free throw line, but you know, she's still an impressive player. As Balligan comes out, Aislinn Koenig, a junior from Surrey, British Columbia, strokes the second one in. What I liked about Koenig in that Clemson game, yeah, she was held to a season loan, was 2 of 11 from the floor, but she made the game-winning layup. She did. Never mentally got out of the game. Here's Fletcher, six seconds to play in the quarter. Pond. Works on Rodgers. Jam step. Trying to create her shot. Terrific on-ball defense by D.D. Dee Dee Rodgers. Forcing the tough attempt from Francesca Pond. And as we head to the fourth quarter, North Carolina State, number eight in the nation, trying to preserve a 19-0 start. They lead Tech by five. Ledger with us this afternoon on ACC Network Extra, number eight North Carolina State, the last unbeaten team standing in women's college basketball. The Wolfpack have outscored Georgia Tech every quarter, but NC State only leads by five, 50 to 45. 
ESPN and the ACC bring you ACC Network coming August 2019. 15 universities all on one network. Visit GetACCN.com to learn more. This has been a feisty, competitive game. Everything we expected it to be when these teams walked in the building, Fallon. Yeah, it's exactly what we expected. Both of these teams are very good defensively, and they're great rebounding teams. They've been very even with rebounding, but the defense has been key and critical. Both right now going into the fourth quarter, NC State with 50, Georgia Tech at 45. NC State averages around maybe 70 points a game. Georgia Tech around that uh, mark as well, but... This is going to be a fought, hard fought out game between two very good teams, and it's just going to be a fight to the finish to see who can get a win. Georgia Tech 8 and 1 at home this year, including a pair of wins over top 15 teams. Dixon gets the scoring started eight seconds into the quarter. And that was good. That's what Georgia Tech has to do against NC State zone get it to their post players and score quickly within their offense. Oh, and the first opportunity to break the pressure in the quarter results in a turnover. And that's what you don't want to see. It's like. They progressed in that third quarter with uh, the zone and the pressure that Georgia Tech was applying, being able to break the full court pressure. And then that's the first turnover to start this fourth quarter. You don't want to see that. NC State kind of seized up against Clemson's pressure in the fourth quarter on Thursday as Dixon was held by Cassell on that roll to the rim. North Carolina State Thursday led by 11 with eight minutes to go against the Tigers. But then Clemson went on a 12-0 run. North Carolina State had to rescue itself from the brink to preserve that unbeaten record. They did. I mean, you don't want to lose a game at home if, if you're any team, but you just keep fighting to the finish. This NC State team, they're going to play hard, but they were able to pull off a tough road victory against Clemson. Quickly, a second foul of the quarter. That's on Crutchfield. Now, remember, North Carolina State commits the second fewest fouls per game in the country. So if Georgia Tech gets into the bonus early in this quarter, that might change the complexion as well. Looped out to Pond, reels that in, and there's a third foul. That's on Rodgers. Wow. And that's not how you want to start the fourth quarter if you're Coach Moore. That's three quick fouls called on his team, and they're just trying to play aggressive defense, but they keep getting called for fouls. And Georgia Tech is making it easier, seemingly going to get in the bonus a lot quicker, faster in this fourth than they probably anticipated. Balligan off the player screen. Rolls to the rim. Dishes to Fletcher. Extra pass, Pond. And the defensive rebound, Leslie. Pond unable to tie it. And Leslie's such a common effect, a common effect for this team. I mean, she gets that rebound, dribbles the ball up full court. It's like, I don't care about any pressure coming my way. She's just a common factor for this team, a great leader. Played in the Final Four as a freshman in Maryland. Swerves, drives on Dixon, gets it to the rim. We play on. Chasing after her own miss. And that's tapped out last by Georgia Tech. And well, that, following yeah. her own miss and the hustle keeping possession alive, that's all Kira Leslie. She's fighting. And she's looking like, where's the foul? I'm over here. She thought she had the foul when she went up for that layup, and it was a no call, and she fights for her own miss. That's the hustle plays that you need if Five you want to be 19-0. Five on the clock. Koning. Over Balligan, and it's an air ball. Now, Koenig is a knockdown three point shooter, but that was a tough, a tough ask one. for the junior. That's a tough one to ask for, for anybody with the shot clock winding down and you having to take a three point shot near half court. That was a tough shot. Koenig shoots 41% from three, but even that was a high degree of difficulty for her. Three point game. Balligan pops out. Leslie on her, and another foul on Leslie. You don't want to see that happening. Leslie's so critical. They're going to need her in this fourth quarter. And right there, she gets called for her third personal. And Wolfpack out of fouls to give. A minute 31 into this quarter. And that's a fifth. Leslie with a little shove as Balligan leaped up for the lob. Well, how about this yeah, foul? The yeah. team that commits the second fewest personals per game in the country sends Georgia Tech into the bonus at the 8:25 mark of the fourth quarter. And that's our fourth. They're going to have to either go with Leslie and trust her or they're going to have to pull her soon. She just picked up her fourth foul early in this fourth quarter. Westmore currently weighing his options as Elizabeth Balligan toes the nail for two free throws. Kayla Jones at the scorer's table, and it looks like for the moment 
Westmore doesn't want to risk his leading scorer, Kira Leslie, picking up a fifth. You don't. This game is just entirely too close, and you know you're going to need her down the stretch. Give Balligan 13. It's a one-point game. Here comes Georgia Tech's pressure defense again. Worked into the forecourt. Crunch field for three. And a loose ball foul, other end. And it's against Pond. And that's going to be an interesting subplot to watch, Fallon, over these next few minutes before Leslie re-enters. Who can be that outside shooting threat for NC State in her absence? Well, you would hope it would be Koenig. She's the three-point shooter shooting around 41%. She struggled this afternoon, but they're going to try and find ways to hopefully set her up, and especially Crutchfield. She's hit some big threes in this game. Another call to tight. That foul on Balligan. Her fourth. And they are calling it tight. They're not going to let these two teams play. We've had more foul calls to start this fourth <laughs> quarter than we've had shot attempts. Chandler Scott comes in for Balligan. So both teams' leading scorer is now on the bench. Sometimes it's not number one who wins it for you. It's two, three, four, and five. Right. And both of these teams are very capable of having other players step up and score. Rodgers fills the lane and finishes. And there we go right there. We talk about Rodgers. You know, she's not a scorer, plays her role very well, a great rebounder. But she's been big this afternoon for this NC State team. Picked a great time for her first field goal. Pack up three. Here's Dixon. Kicks. Pond. Wants the tie. Gets the tie. Whoa, and she does the fist pump. With that knockdown, Francesca Pond just pushed up her point total to 10. That was a big three-point shot. Rodgers sends it to Jones. The three right back. Kayla Jones, just a 22% three-point shooter, but has ice in her veins. And this is a battle. This is a fight. You see both benches really getting hyped as each team knocks down a three, and it's like right back in your face, Georgia Tech, with that three-point knockdown by Jones. Here's Loudon. She's a three-point threat. Rogers with a hand at her forehead. Down to Dixon. Shot clock at six. Crowded by Cassell. Shot clock winding down. Comes to Pond. She has to heave it with a hand at her face. And it's a shot clock violation against the Wolfpack. Well, they say play on. Wait a second here. That ball didn't draw anywhere close to rim. It and Westmore didn't. saw it just like we did. But I like Fletcher. She's like, keep playing. Give me the ball. I'm ready to set this off. <laughs> it's up. She takes it from Pond, but I think that was a missed call right there. It was a shot clock violation. The ball didn't touch rim. Well, the clock was stuck at zero. Referees will check as we look at it from Pond, and you see that ball maybe close. Yeah. That's definitely a shot clock violation, and NC State will get the possession. But how about how these teams are just really battling it out? It's a really hard-fought game. They really want it. You know, NC State wants to remain unbeaten, and Georgia Tech wants to continue their streak. They only have one lone loss, and that's to the number one team in the country against Notre Dame at the beginning of ACC play. So this is a big game for both teams. And even though North Carolina State found is 19-0, there is – a degree of skepticism, I think, from some people outside the ACC about that record from North Carolina State. They only have one win against a team that's currently ranked in the top 25. That was now number 23, Michigan State. Beat them back on November 22nd. They've yet to play Notre Dame. They've yet to play Louisville. They've got a road game at number 22, Florida State, on the horizon. They travel to a ranked Syracuse team. A lot of opportunities for North Carolina State to burnish their record as we look at their upcoming schedule. But their RPI is also six. Yeah. And nobody at this stage in the season is in the RPI top ten by winning a raffle. No, you're not. And they've really played well, especially I think you have to applaud NC State, the amount of injuries they've had, and they've been able to sustain this this uh, record of just or this streak of 19 wins. That's pretty amazing and tremendous. When you have to think about your personnel and having to replace certain people or key pieces and just having players just step up and just compete. And that's what it's about. Coach Moore has recruited some very talented young women, and they've just really stepped up and really taken advantage of this opportunity. It is confirmed a shot clock violation. Ball to the Wolfpack. Go, 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 
NC State 9 of 19 from three today. Crouchfield has knocked down a few. Works it over to Koenig. Slips it down. Pond got the block, but a foul called. Yeah, and when you swat like that, it looked like a clean block, but that's easy for a ref to make, even if it is a clean block. You had Cassell, she slipped a bit. Pond thought she had a clean block, but she gets called for the foul. Cassell, a 71% foul shooter. Makes it a four-point NC State lead. And that's why this team, they've been able to win 19 games as well. They're able to knock down free throws as a team. These are some big wins for Cassell, and she's able to knock them down with one of them. So it makes it a two-possession game. Balligan is now at the scorer's table. She comes in at the next whistle. Watch it, back hit, back hit, back hit. Ledger dances away, Loutonen. Shot clock inside of 10. Now Kubai from the high post. Loudon for three. Rims no good. Rebound Fletcher in traffic. Lost the handle though. And is tapped out last by Fletcher in the Yellow Jackets. And that's great fight by Fletcher. She's able to sky and get that rebound. Unfortunately, she just couldn't get the ball back up on the backboard to try and get a score. But that's the defense of NC State. They're going to fight even if you get an offensive board. They're not going to let it be let it easy. They're not going to let anything easy in the paint. Michelle Joseph, meanwhile, called Elizabeth Balligan back to the bench. So no sub yet for Georgia Tech's leading scorer, who has four fouls. Whistle underneath and off the ball, a foul on Georgia Tech. That's the Yellow Jackets' fourth. That's on Dixon. And right now. Both teams are being called for a lot of fouls, not really able to score anything in their sets. But let's see if NC State can try and capitalize and extend the four-point lead they have right now in this game. Koenig tries to put Pond on skates. The step-back three by Koenig. Fletcher swoops in for the Tech rebound. Koenig, two of eight from three today. And that was great defense by Pond. Fletcher's out of three-point thread. Mid-range shot, though, and she swishes it. And wow, we talk about Kiara Fletcher, how key and critical she was going to have to be in this game if Georgia Tech wants to get a big home victory, and that was a big jump shot right there by the sophomore. Koenig sets her feet, misfires on the three, out of bounds, and is going to Georgia Tech. Boy. Now that is the honey spot for Aislinn Koenig. Couldn't coax that in. Georgia Tech, the ball when we come back. 4.51 to play. Don't go anywhere. NC State by two. Welcome back to Atlanta. Andy Demetra, Fallon Stokes with you. 56-54, North Carolina State clings to the lead over Georgia Tech. Yellow Jackets have to go back to 2012, found the last time Georgia Tech knocked off two top 15 opponents in the same year. They've already done that. Number 14, Georgia, non-conference play. Then a week ago, Sunday versus number 12, Syracuse. Now trying to do what 19 teams have tried and failed at, which is beat North Carolina State. North Carolina State, we think back to the last two games they've had. An overtime escape versus Virginia Tech. Then Thursday, holding off Clemson by three at home. 19-0, North Carolina State has been battled, tested. Can they do it on the road this afternoon? I mean, I think they're very capable. They're right in this game down two. It's just that they can remain consistent. Their defensive pressure, full court pressure, has been tremendous against NC State. And NC State has had fits, and they still have not been able to figure it out. But in this fourth quarter, it's been so many fouls called. We haven't really seen which player is going to be able to step up and make some big plays down the stretch. Elizabeth Balligan is now in, and she takes the flip from Kubai. Kira Leslie is not in. She has four personals for the Wolfpack. Balligan, 13 points, three three-pointers this afternoon. And here is Balligan. Rolls off the screen from Kubai. Shot clock at three. She was blocked by Rodgers. Wow. Great defense by Rodgers. She just stayed, kept her positioning, and was able to get a nice block on Balligan, who was penetrating hard to the basket. Rodgers coming off her first career double-double versus Clemson. A big defensive play there. Koenig chased off the three-point line, hits Crutchfield inside Kunain. One dribble, and she powers it in. Wow. 
She is impressive. Kunain just kept her positioning against Dixon, took one dribble in, and just used her strength to muscle that shot up. And she gives her team a four-point lead. Kunain up to a dozen. North Carolina State closing down those post passes. Pond has to reset. Yeah. They're really making it hard for Georgia Tech to get the basketball in the paint. Battle in the step back three, Drew Rim, but well off. Rebound NC State. Now Koenig tries to thread the needle, comes down to a cutting Kunain, and it's a six-point game. Wow, and you see Pond working so hard to get that deflection. Georgia Tech was slow to get back on defense. And Kunain just ran the lane like a post player is supposed to do and gets an easy layup. Yeah, you could say it was a fortunate bounce foul, but that's the virtue of the big run on the floor in transition. Here's Kubai above the foul line. Kubai turns up and in. That might be the point of the biggest shots we've seen Kubai hit in her career at Georgia Tech. That was a nice little baseline turnaround. Nice finish by the sophomore. Oh, and the upcourt pass overthrown. This is similar to what we saw when NC State played against Clemson the other night. As it was going down the stretch, they had a lead, but then just kind of folded with the pressure that Clemson applied. And they're doing the same right now with Georgia Tech with only under three minutes left in this ball game. And at the 243 mark, Westmore has reinserted Kira Leslie. Shannon Scott is in for Elizabeth Dixon. Pond with it. Rotates to Scott. And Kubai is asking for it. She wants it. She's got it. On Kunain, and she draws the foul. And she's fighting for it. She's being aggressive going to the basket. And as we said, we were waiting to see which player was going to step up in the clutch as this game was going down, or the clock was ticking down. And Kubai has stepped up the last couple of possessions on the offensive end for Georgia Tech. Kubai is 0-2 at the foul line today. And seven for her last 19. A touch under 50% for the year from this sophomore from Italy. Georgia Tech was in the bonus, so regardless, two shots for Kubai. That's a big shot right there by Kubai. Able to knock down that first free throw. That's usually the hardest one to knock down, and she has a second one. That her team needs her if they want to cut this lead that NC State has. See Loudon now in for Balligan, playing defense for offense with those four personals from Balligan. The second free throw heavy off the heel, rebound Kunain. Three-point game. Leslie hustles it in four court. Number eight, North Carolina State steal. Good job by Pine. She dug in. Saw Kunain was trying to go one-on-one -on -one and just got a hand in and was able to steal that basketball. Pond leads the Yellow Jackets and steals. Three-point game. Dubai calling for it. Loudon has it instead. Over to Pond. Dumps it down to Kubai. Shot clock at five. Again turns. The hook was short. And the rebound yanked in by Leslie. That's a tough shot for anybody. But that's a shot that Kubai likes to take. The one-hand little hook shot. Minute 35 to play. It's a three-point game. Can North Carolina State have another hard-fought down to the minute win in ACC play? Kunain has the mismatch on Loudon. She forces the tie-up. Wow. Possession stays with North Carolina State. And we talk about the feistiness of Loughton. That was just great defensive pressure right there. Kunain definitely has the height advantage, and she saw she had Loughton on her back, so she takes the dribble about to post up, and Lotton is like, not on my watch. Oh, but off the inbound, Kunain slipped free of Kubai. Layup and the foul. Man, Kunain is just an impressive close player, especially just to be a freshman. So composed. Just a nice finish, nice play right there by the freshman. Nice slip. Bad defense by Georgia Tech. And that is the fifth on Kubai. How about the clutch plays down the stretch by Elisa Kunain? Second in the ACC in scoring among freshmen behind Elizabeth Balligan. Balligan is third team to Kunain off the bench, 16 and 6 of 8 at the free throw line. A chance to make it a six point game. I mean, if NC State's able to get this win on the road, Kunain is the reason. She's been clutch, she's been huge off the bench, and has 17 points for this NC State team. 
Ledger pounds it down. Trying for the up and under. No good. Crutchfield passes batted up court but comes down to Leslie. She's got numbers if she wants. Dribbles out of traffic. And North Carolina State can sit on clock. They have this six-point lead. You see Georgia Tech trying to be aggressive defensively. But as you said, Andy, they can just run this clock down and then try and go for a score or draw a foul. Lastly, trying to unhinge herself from Fletcher. Drops it off to Crutchfield. With the clock at five, Crutchfield with a step back three. It was an air ball. And it's going to Georgia Tech. Michelle Joseph calls timeout. 43.6 seconds to play. How about Boy. the defense down the stretch, though, by the Wolfpack? Georgia Tech, when they haven't been pressed back into a late shot clock situation, those dribble drives have been fiercely contested. They have, and that's the hard part. Like we said, the key, one of the keys for Georgia Tech, let their defense create their offense, letting their D be their identity. But they haven't had a lot of fast break points in this game. We, we knew NC State was going to be stingy from the beginning, and that's exactly what they've been down the stretch. They have not allowed Georgia Tech to get anything in the paint. And North, that's why North Carolina State, 15th nationally in scoring defense, 5th in field goal percentage defense, and they've held the Yellow Jackets on their home floor to 33.9%. you got 43.6 seconds to go. Do you go for a 3 on this possession, family? I don't think you have to. I think you try and score early within the shot clock if you can. If it's a quick hit set play where you can get an easy score, you do it. If it's a three, just take it. Georgia Tech, 5 of 20 from beyond the arc today. Fletcher's not a three-point threat. Gets it down to Pond. Steps outside the arc. And this is what you can't do. They're taking off too much time off the clock. It's taking them too long to try and find a score. Balligan. And timeout called by Michelle Joseph to that whistle, not for a foul, but a timeout for Georgia Tech. And she could see it. You know, NC State, they force you to make it, to take a tough shot, to find a way to take an outside shot. They'll dare you, dare you to take an outside shot before they give you something in the paint. And that's something Georgia Tech, they don't like to do. They want to get to the paint and get to the basket. But that's 12 and a half seconds that North Carolina State's defense took off the clock. Yeah, that was great defense. And like I said, Georgia Tech needed to score early, being down by six. When they inbounded the basketball, they were around maybe like 43 seconds on the game clock, and they weren't able to find anything offensively. Both teams are in the bonus. Possession error, as you can see, favors North Carolina State. North Carolina State, the last unbeaten team in men's or women's college basketball. They've endured one injury after another to maintain this unblemished start and trying to go 20-0, which is no small feat no matter what level you play at. To do here at McCamish, where Georgia Tech is 8-1 on the year, ultra impressive. And that's very tough. The start conference play, the majority of their games have been on the road. So for them to be able to continue that streak and win some big road games, that, that speaks volumes. I mean, we said before, they haven't played against too many ranked opponents yet in this young season, but they have been tremendous. And anytime you have a 19-game winning streak, that's hard for anybody. That's very impressive. Fletcher still looking, finds Pond. Pond over to Balligan. And do they call that in the act or on the floor? That could make a huge difference here. It's on Kunane. And it'll be three shots wow. for Elizabeth Balligan. Smart play by the freshman. You could just tell she took that one dribble and it was quick to take that shot. And if it stands, that was a big heads up play by Balagon. Now they're going to no, change okay. it to two shots. Now that could have been because her foot was on Another the line. line. But it looked like that, that foul was on the sidestep and it not did. the shot release. Yeah. Balligan makes it a five point game. And this freshman, we talk about her all the time, was, may, may not be the, the best game we've seen her play this season, but she's still so consistent and big for this team. She's got into foul trouble, and that's affected her scoring, but she hits big buckets. No good. Kunane the rebound. And timeout called North Carolina State. So one of two trip for Balligan. Kunane with the big defensive rebound, and Westmore uses timeout. Now with 23.8 seconds to go, Georgia Tech has no choice but to foul. They do. They have to foul, and hopefully they foul a low percentage free throw shooter for NC State. But like I said before, as a team, they shoot it around 68, 69% per game. They're pretty consistent, and these are clutch free throws. They've had to have been knocking down free throws to 
maintain a 19-game winning streak. So I'm assuming that may continue this afternoon going to the charity stripe. Now to seal this game, North Carolina State will have to erase the memory of Thursday because preserving that lead late versus Clemson, the Wolfpack missed four straight free throws and gave Clemson a chance to tie in the final possession. Well, I'm sure Georgia Tech's hoping that can happen again if they force NC State back to the free throw line. Leslie to inbound. Finds Kunane. Back to Leslie. And now the foul on Balligan. She had no choice, but that's Balligan's fifth. Balligan is pointing toward Loudon and saying, no, it was on to her, but I think she was the first to the spot. And, that's and that a indeed huge disqualifies loss. Balligan. That's a huge loss for Georgia Tech, especially on the offensive end. Being this close with around 21 seconds left in this game, they're going to need her scoring, but they come back with another in uh, Elizabeth Dixon. Leslie has 14 points, no free throws today. One for one. Knocks it down, and that's what clutch players do. We said she does it all. You know, she's that all-around player for NC State, and why not knock down some free throws as well? Calmly drains the second. Timeout. Seven-point lead for North Carolina State. And the task got much more arduous for the Yellow Jackets, not only because they're down seven following the free throws, but with Balligan picking up her fifth, yes. one less three-point shooter. It does, and it makes you think, like, where's the scoring going to come from? You have Pond, who's hit some threes, and I'm sure Georgia Tech's going to look for her. But right now they do need to take some three-point shots. Not much time left on this clock, and they're down seven points with only 21 seconds left. Three and double figures for North Carolina State. Kunane, 17. Leslie up to 16. And again, you can't overstate how impressive this run has been. North Carolina State has won five straight games after the season-ending injury to Grace Hunter, their leading scorer, second-leading rebounder. Different players have stepped up on different nights. Leslie has certainly been one today. The freshman, Elisa Kunane, off the bench, leading North Carolina State in scoring and trying to string together one last defensive stand to put this out of reach. Inbounded to Pond. Lost the handle. It was tipped last by Rogers. Well, that was close. Pond was able to get her hand out of that ball before it went out of bounds. Um, but Kunan, she's been amazing this game, and she's been great in the second half of this NC State team. And the first half, you could say it was guard play, but if it wasn't for her post presence in this game, who knows where NC State would have been. Fletcher, tough pull up. Bangs hard off the backboard. Rebound, Rogers, and she's fouled. And that was a tough shot right there by Fletcher. Tries to take an off-balance jump shot, and it ricochets off the backboard. And then you have Rodgers going to the free throw line. So seemingly it looks like NC State might have this game in the bag with only 13 seconds left. And perhaps fitting that D.D. Rodgers is at the line. Her older sister, Rodriguez, starting for Georgia Tech. Three yeah. points, eight boards for Rodgers. But it's what she does. She's a rebounder. She's consistent with that. He says she's the second leading rebounder on this NC State team. And she may not score it a lot, but she does the intangibles like playing solid defense and rebounding the basketball. Lead of eight. Time running out on the Yellow Jackets. Intercepted Crutchfield. 5.9 seconds to play, and North Carolina State absolutely locked the doors and threw away the key defensively down the stretch. They did. And that's what, when you see great teams or winning teams, that's what they're able to do. When they need to really get down on defense and play hard to get a win, they're able to do it. And NC State was very capable this afternoon, playing solid defense the entire game and just holding Georgia Tech well below their scoring average with 58 points in this game. That foul was on Francesca Pond, her fifth. A lot of fouls we call this afternoon. A lot of foul outs, disqualifications. Well, two physically imposing teams. Perhaps that's no surprise. It's not. Crutchfield has 11. Ties her ACC high. But this was a hard-fought game for this Georgia Tech team at home. You know, they didn't get complacent. They didn't get down on themselves. But it hopefully it lets them know that they're very capable of play play to play against the best in this conference, and hopefully they can learn from this game and grow. Fletcher, one last finish, but North Carolina State holds off Georgia Tech, and Westmore's team now moves to 20-0 on the year, and the Wolfpack match their best start in conference play in 30 years.
the last unbeaten standing in women's college basketball will enter the week with that title once more. A sixth consecutive win for the Wolfpack over the Yellow Jackets, who fall to 13-7. and seven. Georgia Tech had a terrific opportunity to embellish its NCAA tournament resume. They moved to 3-4. and four. They in conference. But that was an impressive game. Both teams very hard fought. They wanted it. Georgia Tech just fell a little bit short. But NC State, this is a tough, competitive team, and I'm sure we're going to see them do big things at tournament time. Maybe two NC tournament teams do we watch today. For Fallon Soaks, I'm Andy Demetrius saying so long from McCamus Pavilion. The final score, North Carolina State 68, Georgia Tech 60. All games aired on the ESPN Networks. are streaming live on the ESPN app. Log on to watchespn.com or download the Watch ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN. So long, everybody.